Uh, hello, welcome to the podcast for the World Banknote Auctions. I'm doing this from home, as you're no doubt aware. We're going through a strange times at the moment, so I'm in isolation down in Wiltshire. Um, Arnas and the team are up in London working hard um, for your, on your behalf. Um, and I'd like just to say a few words of introduction to the auctions. Arnas will go through in further detail or with individual notes. Um, but we have several sales this April. We start with the Professor Sue collection, which to use a much used and rather horrible expression, a real collector's collection. Uh, well worth a look um, and some very interesting items in there. Um, we follow Professor Sue's collection with the general world sale, which I think is a, a nice catalogue. Uh, I just feel very sad that we would, as, as I speak now, be in Maastricht at the World Banknote Show, the biggest bank, banknote convention in the world, handing out catalogues, pressing the flesh and promoting the auction, which obviously we cannot do um, at this stage, um, which I find personally disappointing because I was rather proud of the catalogue. Anyway, this is the, the catalogue, obviously all online and viewed there. Um, we have some lovely stuff in here. Uh, one or two things I'd just like to mention uh, particularly. We have, there's a few nice little Argentinian notes, which I think shows the pleasure of working in a place like Sphinx. They're not particularly valuable. A little group came in in an old envelope, really raggy looking banknotes. Uh, we've got a very good book on Argentina by Bob Bauman, a client of ours. Uh, you start looking them up and you find they're all very, very rare. It's actually quite exciting to do something like that. So they're well worth a look, surprisingly good. We follow that with probably the best collection in the auction, which is a collection of Angola. Um, Arnas pointed out to me uh, a few months ago, a few pictures that arrived on the computer and said, have a look at these. I went and had a look and every now and again, probably two, three times a year, you see something that is truly exciting. I took one look and I said, Arnas, call the client and if necessary, go and get the notes. Um, I'd hate anybody else to get them, basically. Um, and they're in the auction. It's a collection of Angola, which was scheduled for destruction. Um, so, uh, again, another great reason for actually having them in the sale. They are composite essays, trials, specimens, and issued notes for Angola, a beautiful series. And my personal favourites, I love composite essays because they are, in my opinion, the zenith of the printer's art. Beautifully put together, um, presentation pieces, uh, and there are some lovely, lovely, whether you collect Angola or not, and I don't collect banknotes, unfortunately, it'd be too difficult in my job. Um, but I looked at these notes and I thought, these are truly gorgeous. So have a look at those. We've got the Shadi Samhan collection of Middle Eastern banknotes in the sale as well. Lovely Jordanian and Iraqi notes, areas that are, if you like, in the last few years, possibly one of the most improved areas for collectors um, around. Uh, we've also got some great rarities. There's a lovely Mauritius note uh, in the auction from the Ile de France de Bourbon. It's a very early note. We can only find examples of two bits of the, of the notes, not a complete note, and this is a denomination that hasn't been seen, as far as we know anyway. Super, super rarity. Um, and there are lots of other things in the auction, as I say, which RNS will, will go through in slightly more detail, obviously. Um, we're under difficult circumstances at the moment. Um, so that's the world sale. Please enjoy it. And as I say, I'm very sorry I'm not able to promote it personally, um, but well worth your attention. And as I say, anything that diverts us from what's going on in the outside world is probably a welcome distraction. So good luck in that. Thank you very much. Dear friends and clients, we hope that you, your families and your friends are well in these turbulent times and in hope to distract you from your daily routines, we would like to show you what we have to offer in our upcoming auctions. I will start with our e-auction. It has more than 240 lots, a lot of rare material and beautiful banknotes, certainly uh, to keep an eye for collector. And I will start with Australia, one pound remainder, private trader's note, George Shenton, circa 1865, Beautiful Aussie design, very nice embossing colors, very, very strong, and of course, very high grade. And an interesting feature it has, it has a watermark, considering it is 1865. Um, it is very sophisticated feature for the banknote. Moving on in our e-auctions, I have one Somali from Italian Somaliland. 
Well, before starting the podcast, I've seen there were some comments and about this great banknote, beautiful design. Some people would say this is a classic rarity of African colonial history. And very nice comments about the leopard that um, is printed on this banknote. It looks so real that some people say it looks like it just would jump out of the paper. Once again, Italian Somaliland, 100 Somali specimen, beautiful banknote, very, very nice design. Um, and it has lion featuring on it. Some people have commented that it has lion that seems to be similar to the one in Paramount Pictures. Last but definitely not least, we have five rubles, beautiful, it is from the from the late 19th century and just a magnificent banknote. Why? Well, first of all, it's very difficult to find this banknote in any shape, especially in a presentable one, um, as this banknote is. There are three types of these banknotes, well, of the, of the dates on this banknote, 1882, 84, and 86. We have the earliest type, it is 1882. Very nice banknote, as I, as I say, nice design, it has crowned double-headed eagle and coat of arms of Tsar Alexander III. I'm finishing with the e-auction and due to social and distancing norms, Elaine is filming from home, where she will talk about well-known Professor Yi Tsong Zhu collection of world banknotes. Starting off from our two days of full auctions on the 7th of April at 10 a.m., we will have the Professor Yi Dong Su collection of world banknotes. So a lot of you will be familiar with um, Professor Su's names because he has written numerous important reference books on Chinese banknotes and in coins. And also he has offered a part of his Chinese banknote collection and um, back with our Hong Kong office in January, which received great success. So a lot of you might not be familiar with his World Banknote collection. Um, so he collects in five categories. So they are general, woman, famous figures, animals and flowers. Because Professor Su collected with a focus on symbolisms and various stories behind banknotes, hence that's why he has collected in these five categories. So this time we have done something quite different to our previous catalogues. We have also um, organised um, the lots in the auction in these five categories as well. So in the hopes of in the hopes of just sort of making existing collectors, new collectors, just think a bit more about sort of what's behind the banknotes that they're collecting. So I'll just talk about um, two highlights um, from this auction. So the first one I will talk about is the Netherland Indies 100 Golden from 1938. So a lot of you will be familiar with that series um, and it's known as the Javanese Dancer series. Um, that is one of my favourite series um, and I particularly like the 100 Golden. Um, is because I think that series, or no, although it, it might not have the bright colours um, on a lot of other banknotes that might attract people, but I just think that um, the intricate designs on, of the different Javanese dancers on different banknotes, I think is, I think is very interesting. And I like um, looking at the intricate headgear, headgear that they each have on, and they're all different. So um, out of the series, the hundred golden is the largest denomination. Um, it's in colours that is the brightest note of them all. So the lot that we have offered in this auction is graded 30. Um, so this is a very scared large nomination note, so regardless of what grade, um, it, I'm sure it will be popular with many collectors, um, especially in the grade of 30. I think, that's, um, I think that is a very pleasing example for all collectors. So, Another highlight that I will talk about is the Indonesian specimen 2,500 rupai and the 5,000 rupai. So that is, an, so they are both unissued notes from that series and it only exists in specimen forms. So I think um, I like those two notes is because um, of the ornate border sort of at the front and on the back and, and the the similar theme is that they both have dancers. Um, one is the Javanese dancers on the front, and the other is the female dancer at the back of these um, two lovely Indonesian specimens. So um, Professor Su had a folk he so out of all the banknotes he collected, his favourite categories is flowers, which he has said before. So um, although none of the two notes that I talked about had 
particular flowers as a focus on them but I think the two Indonesian notes with the ornate border that's made up with local shrubbery with like coconut trees um I think it's still pretty bank notes that um that sort of represents um that represent the sort of um local shrubbery and the sort of um just represents the culture of Indonesia which I think is is very nice to have on a bank note so just I'll just talk about a little bit more about what's in the auction so Professor Su also has a set of um, good grade King Ghazi notes from Iraq. Um, so, it, so he has King Ghazi the first and King Ghazi the second. So uh, both an excellent grade for um, its type. So I would encourage all collectors to uh, look at those as well. So um, due to time constraint, these are all I could talk about, which I wish I could talk about everything in the catalogue. So now I would pass over to my colleague Arnas, who will talk about um, the World Bank Note Auction, which will start at 12 o'clock noon on the 7th as well. Thank you. Dear friends and clients, hello again. And here in front of me, I have World Bank Notes catalog that will be held on Tuesday, 7th of April, and will finish on 8th of April, Wednesday. Well, out of this catalog, we have a lot of beautiful banknotes, a lot of great rarities, a lot of history in the banknotes and behind them. And of course, we couldn't choose all the banknotes to speak about. We have written about all of them, but we have decided to choose a couple of them to speak about in this podcast. Of course, I would like to start with one of my favorite collections. It is the collection of Angola that belongs to a very well-known philatelist in Portugal, Elder Correa. Well, before I even start to speak about the banknotes, an interesting story how he acquired the collection. Well, many, many de decades ago, a private collector and struggled to raise money for his uh, daughter's wedding. He went to the local stamp uh, dealer shop, he knew the vendor, and he offered for the vendor to buy the, the collection. He came in nine beautiful uh, blue albums, uh, well, the, the, the big, big envelopes, very, very, very nice. And of course, the, sadly, the owner of the, of the shop didn't know much about the banknotes at the time, and neither he had much of the interest, it was many decades ago. And <laughs> luckily enough, Elder Korea was there. He knew the owner, they were friends, and he had a look at the, at the material, at the banknote archival material. Very quickly, he realized that's a very good deal and not to be missed. So of course, he has enjoyed the collection privately up until a couple of months ago. And here it is, we have it, we catalog it. Uh, everyone who cataloged them feels that it was very, very great opportunity to catalog them, touch them, see them. And I would advise you, even if you're not bidding an auction, it doesn't matter. You could go on our website, www.spink.com, click on auctions, there's our world auction, get free PDF, download it, save it into your computer, have a look through the collection, and you have a piece of cataloging that could be used as a reference work in the future. Um, now, without any further delay, I will start with, with this amazing collection. Before I start with the banknotes, I would like to speak about the conception of banknote. And we can see 1,000 Angularis, hand-drawn sketch by the artist himself. Uh, this is how it came to the conception. So the conception was we need 1,000 Angularis, we need, of course, some various, various designs, and uh, there were some features mentioned that had to be there, and we can see that there is man at left, and there is woman at right. The woman is on the watermark and the man became John II, the king of Portugal. We will see his portrait in the later lots I will show you. Very beautiful colors. An interesting thing is that um, the reverse part is featured on the banknote itself. Reverse part, the first of the reverse part at my left um, is the return of Diago Co, a famous Portuguese navigator to Beja, Portugal, his homeland. And the right design, um, I think it, it is a king and it's a ceremony around the king. Um, that design hasn't been used. So we have the left one that was used and the one on the top. Moving on in Angola, we can see that we have 1,000 Angolares already, a, a design that is in conception, uh, and that is a partial composite essay. Well, why it is partial? Because they didn't know which parts to make, how to make them yet, uh, where they should stand, and that's what they've done. They started with, with portraits of both sides. They had to be in the design in the middle, and they photographed it. Of course, if 
there are any con corrections that need to be done. You wouldn't do it on a composite essay itself because it's one. Uh, so that's what they've done. They made a photograph, they expand it. If any correction needs to be done, then they would do it on it and move forward. Here's a picture of real size banknote. So, so that design here is the one of the real size banknote. Um, of course, they reduced it to see how it would look like and if it's a proper design, which it was. Moving on in the pictures, we can see 1000 Angularis composite essay picture, same as the previous one, just with more uh, bits of design added to it. One of my favorite parts is how they would do, uh, how they would annotate parts that needs to be shadowed. So they would put, take a purple ink pen and write on it. And we will see in the next picture that's exactly what is done there. We can see that the parts that were annotated in the previous one are shadowed. Of course, um, they realized it's not perfect yet, so they, they added some, some other parts of ink in the parts where it should be shadowed. Moving on, this is the final product um, of reduced size picture, same, um, of the real size banknote. And that's the design they used forward, and this was complete, good enough for them to use, and that's what they used. Here we have same, just reverse parts, and we can see the conceptions of the, of the essay, the drawings. It's not complete yet, and many parts are missing, but the conception is there. They want to see how it looks like, and if it's suitable, which it was, of course. And following step they do is reduction of the same photograph that we just seen. Looks brilliant, very nice, um, early conceptions, and then they will move forward. Moving forward, we can see that the composite, reverse part of composite essay had many more features, very beautiful design here, um, nice shadowing, but still wasn't good enough for them, so some parts needed to be shadowed, annotated in pink, and moving forward, in this picture, which is the most beautiful picture to me, we can see that design is, is very strong, um, images are almost sharp, but still, some parts needed to be shadowed. And it's annotated in pink, we can see, and in the later picture I will show you, you will be able to see that the parts that are annotated here are corrected and shadowed already. And here we go, the picture I have spoken about. Very, very strong um, shadowing, very well-defined images, beautiful. Oh, just, just very nice um, scene in general. And that's how they do it. Uh, this is the last part of the composite essay. Um, it's well refined. The composite essay is almost complete, com complete on the reverse part. And further on, of course, they would have to reduce the image size, and that's what they will do in the next picture. Here we go, we have 1000 Angularis reduced picture of reverse. As I mentioned before, beautiful scene, all the features are there. One extra feature that is on this back picture is the color palette, color palette of purple color with different shading. Of course, um, now they see that the composite essay is done, they have to have color on it. And the conceived color that time was purple, they wanted to have purple and they wanted to see different shades, how it would look like, and we will be able to see on the composite essays themselves, the ones that were photographed in these pictures, um, that the color resembles the one on these palettes. Moving on in our pictures, in, in our lots, um, here it is, the composite essay itself, obverse part, very well preserved as it's encapsulated for many, many decades to come, of course framed on, a, on it is a composite essay on board. So the board here behind it, it's, it's a board, it's framed. Very nice thing it has is Bradbury's frame and Bradbury's logo at lower left part, meaning that the design that is here was approved by Bradbury to be printed. The obverse part of this composite essay is here, same, uh, preserved and encapsulated for the many decades to come, same Bradbury's logo, beautiful design, and just a magnificent piece, of course, unique. Moving on in 1000 Angolari series, we have front specimen. 
Well, it is unifaced. And the reason for it to be unifaced, they would have two. They would have unifaced obverse and unifaced reverse. Um, Sometimes if, if the composite essay is gone, they would have to have a picture of it, and that's what they would have. They, they would have a picture to archive it, but this one was already of the printed one. So, and we can see it was printed by Delarue. Well, you would think, why was it printed by Delarue? Because it was signed by Bradbury. And Bradbury would consign a lot of contracts, and they, they, would, they would produce the designs. Sometimes they wouldn't have enough people, maybe machinery to print it, so they would subcontract other companies, and that's what they've done with Delarue. So this banknote, even though design is, is done and approved by Bradbury, the banknote itself and the specimens are printed by Delarue. The last banknote of 1000 Angolara series is the issued one. Once again, issued by Delarue, extremely difficult to find in issued format, and of course, 1000 Angolares is an iconic piece of Portuguese colonial history. Further on, moving on with Angola, I thought if I wouldn't speak about this, uh, this lot, it would be a crime. Well, because if you have seen in our cover, we have code names, and the code name of this sale is Barossa. So now I'm speaking about the lot that features Padre Antonio José de Sosa Barossa. Padre himself, he was a very well-known man at the time. He was a scientific missionary in Angola and Mozambique and very well respected in all three countries. Here we have three vignettes framed, stamped by the bank, say approved and hand-signed. I haven't seen vignettes like these in different colors being framed with stamps and hand-signed before. This is a very, very beautiful lot. It has three different colors. We can see brown, uh, gray and black and the blue with shades. Well, before the auction, we were considering um, our auction catalog covers. And one of the lots we wanted to use, or the features, was uh, Padre Barroso himself. And of course, it, it had a lot of support from the department, but we have chosen to use John II, the King of Portugal, on our portraits. So, an interesting thing why we wanted to use this, these vignettes, or one of them, is that the definition of those vignettes is highly, highly um, accurate. Um, if you zoom them out, they're very, very well defined. A beautiful lot and a remar remarkable um, portrait. Moving on in our world auction, we're honored to have famous Mr. Shadi Samhan's collection of Iraq, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia. And I would like to speak about one lot out of Holy's collection um, is 10 Real Saudi Arabia Monetary Agency. Very interesting banknote because it's number one, prefix number one, serial number one banknote. Normally these banknotes are given to King of Saudi Arabia himself or at least the family. Um, this time this banknote, banknote is on an open market and a very rare opportunity for collectors to acquire it as this is number one as I mentioned and it should belong to the king. Moving on in Middle East, we have one quarter dinar featuring King Faisal II as youth. This type of portrait that is in this banknote isn't the one that is usually printed on the banknote. Normally it's the profile or slight variations of it. Uh, but this, this portrait is uh, one of the unusual ones. And of course, in such a high grade, this banknote is a high scarcity. One of our iconic rarities we have in our world auction is one piastre Ile de France de Bourbon Compagnie des Andes, uh, one piastre issued for French East India Company, 1759, as early as that. And of course, one of the fascinating things about it, it is not discovered before. It was never discovered, never recorded anywhere. And even more fascinating about it is that there were a quarter and a half of piastre sold before, but they weren't as a full banknote. They were just cutoffs of the banknote, so parts of the design, uh, but never as a full banknote. And here we go, um, one piastre, never recorded before, absolute discovery, and it is a full banknote. As I mentioned, none of the previous ones sold were full ones. This is complete banknote, a brilliant discovery. Moving on in our discovery banknotes, we have 8 Seeker Rupee, Bank of Hindustan, 
beautiful banknote, never recorded ever, ever recorded in any books before. Um, only four, 10 and 16 seeker rupees were recorded before. And this one is absolutely brilliant discovery as well. Uh, bank of Hindustan, early bank in India, the first bank that started to print paper money. Uh, well, bank was dissolved in the early 19th century, and this is one of the last banknotes that has printed. An interesting story how the banknotes got here. Um, so the private collector who brought us this banknote, he bought a book about um, East India Company's trading. And he, while he was reading the book, on one, in one of the pages, here we go, banknote was there. Um, he's very fortunate to have it, and we're very, very happy to have it in our auction. Magnificent discovery and a beautiful uh, piece of Indian history, Indian banking history, and just a very rare banknote in itself. I will hand it on to Barnaby now to speak about our Bank of England 20 pound charity auction of low serial numbers and the special ser serial numbers. Following on from the world banknotes, um, I would just like to make a special mention. We have a, a charity auction of Bank of England notes. We've now done several of these. Uh, they're always great fun. People love the idea of the Bank of England doing a, a charity so with low numbers. Low numbers are not generally available. Um, as you know, certainly the very low numbers, number one goes to the Queen, etc. We were not allowed to ask for the very low numbers, otherwise we'd end up in the tower. So we're lucky to have what we have, but we actually do have a number 10, which is a very, very low number indeed in the auction. Um, I would love to do the auction, uh, do a public auction for them. We always get a full room. The chief cashier usually comes and auctions the first lot. So it's a great occasion. Obviously, circumstances mean we can't do that anymore. Um, but our online platform is excellent. And I really hope that the notes go for a good price. It's all uh, for a charity um, and they deserve to go well. I think it's a very nice note, the new polymer 20 pound note and some wonderful numbers. And I know our friends in Singapore and Hong Kong and China and Indonesia will be very keen, hopefully this time as well, because they do like their numbers. So um, once again, good luck to everybody in that. And as I say, it's all for a good cause. Uh, so fingers crossed. Thank you very much indeed.